Hello folks, it's time to answer one of those life questions. That is, just how much current can we push through a phase terminal on a Gen 2 Prius inverter before the overcurrent trips? So, you'll see we have a brown wire going to one of the phase terminals, another brown wire going to the ground terminal. This multimeter is currently reading out the uh, MG2 overcurrent um, trip signal pin ting me bob, which is this wire here, pin 27 for those of you following along at home. Should this voltage drop, it means we have shut down our MG2 inverter because of an overcurrent event. To provide said overcurrent event, we have this low voltage but very high current power supply capable of slightly over, I believe, 130 amps. Uh, at the minute, it is at its lowest possible setting and we are going to crank up. So, let's follow along. So there is a very mundane 25 amps and we can confirm that with our fluke meter here telling us we have indeed got 25 amps of DC current flowing into this phase and out through the low side which we have currently turned on. Time to crank up a bit more. Let's go for 50 amps. 50 amps and we have 50 amps exactly on our clamp meter. Still no sign of an overcurrent. Let's go for 75. Seventy five, yeah about seventy four on the fluke. Let's go for a hundred. One hundred and I've got just in case you think I'm being economical with the truth, about ninety-nine on the fluke. Now, still no sign of an overcurrent shutdown. Let's firewall it. That's it, I've turned the pot all the way. 135 amps on the meter, 134 call it on the fluke. Unfortunately, there is no sign of MG2 initiating a overcurrent shutdown. We're still at the high voltage here on the MFIV terminal. So it looks as if, at the very least, we can pump 135 amps through MG1 and not get a trip. Now, okay, we're on MG1 this time. We're at minimum current, about one amp on the fluke. So, once more onto the breach, dear friends, dear inverters. So let's go to 25 amps and we'll just confirm that. Yep, I've got 25, 26 amps on the fluke. Let's head up towards 50. 50 amps. Yep, got 50 on the fluke. Seventy five, yep. Yeah. <laughs> hundred amps. Yep. Hundred on the fluke. Yep, 
maxed out got 134 amps on the fluke Our power supply is maxed out and no sign of a trip out so that's interesting so yeah unfortunately my fancy power supply didn't have the oomph let's see if a fully charged 110 amp hour car battery will so we've got our clamp meter set to um let's bring you guys along you love these kind of full motion aspects we've got our clamp meter set to inrush we've our battery hooked up in place of the power supply got my test lamp on there so you can see that there is a complete circuit and i have a perfectly calibrated resistor here in the shape of this um, piece of 40 by 10 millimeter flat steel um, multimeter is again monitoring our overcurrent shutdown we are on mg1 so let's light this puppy up remember don't do this at home please yeah, because it's so dangerous. Anticlimatic. So, okay, check this out. Got my test lamp on here. Um, and I've got the cable here. Watch the test lamp when I tap the cable off. Yeah, so then we shut down can re-trigger our phase on just by grounding that our test lamp comes back on and off it goes so okay new plan salt water resistor I'd say I probably don't have enough voltage for it to be useful you know, as I said, if I bring them too close, it's just going to shut down, getting a whopping 12 amps of current flow. I don't think that dumping in any more salt is going to be the right answer for this. Jesus. So I found a couple of these 0.1 ohm resistors. But imagine to get 85 amps uh, with one of them. So what I'm going to do one's rather warmed up right now as you might reasonably expect um, but it hasn't burnt out so I'm going to try and parallel two of them here in a rather crude fashion okay don't know what this is going to do we'll give it a shot oh yeah well, I put 140 amps through it yeah it looks like 140 amps is about the most I can get here and it's still not uh, not shutting me down well thanks to the wonders of the resistivity of steel um, this is the longest piece of flat steel bar that I've got at the minute we have found the shutdown current for MG1 and it's quite high Those of you that may not be able to see, thanks to my Super Pro camera work, it is 230.5 amps. That seems to be where we shut down MG1 inverter power stage. Interesting. We will be moving on to MG2 shortly, but I want to repeat this a few times and try and capture the uh, the fun on camera for you guys so let's move the salt out of the way because don't really need the salt at the minute let's get you all professionally tripoded in here get you on the old zoom down now got our test lamp on here I wonder if you'd be better seeing it from this angle I bet you would so let's get you up here on top of the inver inverter where nothing could possibly go wrong of course now got our battery uh, I'm gonna re zero the clamp meter and put it on min max and um, got to re fire the IGBT 
there it's back on not damaged as you can see take our calibrated resistance device which is a piece of bar and then we just run this sucker up and down the uh, the steel section here so I'm going to start down the far end do some spot welding 130 amps 150 amps this seems to be point here come on oh 230 there's 230 yeah 230 230 come up a little closer the steel is starting to bounce on me now 232 wow this bar is getting warm we'll come up another bit Ah, spot welding there we go we're off again at 232 amps so you're going to want to see this again I know you are restart of course the inverter doesn't die because you can't kill a Toyota let's see now more pro camera work for you guys I know you love my pro camera work so it seems as if this area here seems to give us about the 230 amps um, this is about 150 and this is 230 on our uh, calibrated oh dear this is getting warm and this is my kind of contact point that I use for uh, connecting here so let's give that another try clamp meter back on set min max and get our contact point and we will there's 135 140 227 yeah we can maintain 220 if I do that oh there we go 230 yeah around 227 to 230 we have effected a shutdown and uh, yeah so MG1 shuts down at about 230 amps. Okay, folks, welcome back to the MG2 short circuiting experience. Place your bets. Where will we shut down? In my contact point out. 140 amps. 145. 230. Come up a good bit. 250. 260. Wow. MG2 is certainly hanging in there. 250. Damn it, this metal's getting too hot. Crap. Come on, MG2. 260. Ow. Oh god, 267. Ow, ow, ow. Hot, hot. Danger, danger. High temperature. Okay. Ow. Ow. Got a glove. Let's move on. Uh, we're getting to have to get up the resistor here quite a bit. Um, okay, let's try here. Nothing like short circuiting a car battery for kicks, is there? Um, yeah, so 260, 270 is not shutting me down. Uh, come on, MG2, don't make me, don't make me angry. Don't like me when I'm angry. 270. Oh boy. Nope, MG2 is still not shutting down for me. All right, um, let's bring our crop clip back a bit. Let's try again. Come on, MG2. Nope. My God, two out, 290. And we're not dead yet. Ah, oh, this is getting very warm. 360 amps and we're still on. 
Yeah, someone's been someone's been feeding BS around here. There's no doubt about that. Um, this is crazy. Ah, three sixty. Don't think my battery can put out any more, guys. I know you won't believe me. Oh, this is getting warm. I'm gonna put it down. I know you're not gonna believe me. I'm gonna help you out. That is one phase of MG2. One switch of one phase of MG2. All right, it's 360 amps and it hasn't shut down. Now I suppose we could ask, has it actually blown? Is it still capable of switching? And yes it is. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, it's not blown. <sighs> okay. I mean, I don't know. I'm running out of uh, gloves here as I'm wanting to cook pieces of steel bar seems to be about what I can manage right now. Uh, so let's try this. Let's get rid of the, the flat steel. Um, let's uh, put the clamp directly around this. Grab the cable. Mm. Oh, this is not going to end well, folks. So we're going to short circuit the car battery just through this piece of steel. Ah, 370 amps. Okay, let's get rid of the piece of steel. Yay, we finally put it out. 377 amps, we managed to shut it down. But have we killed it? Let us see. No, we haven't killed it. It's still alive. So, 377 amps is the current that it takes to trigger an overcurrent shutdown on one phase of MG2 inver inverter on a Toyota Prius Gen 2 inverter converter. So there you have it folks, the answer to one of life's most fundamental questions. It seems as if it takes somewhere over 350 amps to shut down MG2 and somewhere over 250 amps to shut down MG1 inverter stages in a Gen 2 Prius inverter. That is considerably higher than what I was expecting and a lot higher than some of the figures that I've seen bandied about online. Figures of as little as 100 amps uh, seem to have been the norm. I would guess that nobody actually bothered to check. So remember, that's why I do these things so you don't have to. I leave it there. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Don't forget to dislike, uh, don't share and unsubscribe. Um, check those links in the description for Patreon and PayPal in case you want to help me do more of this madness, but I can't really think why. It'd be stupid. And also there'll be links in there for the Open Inverter Forum, GitHub and whatever else I can stick in there. So do check those links. Until then, happy car battery short circuiting. <laughs>